system associated with it, and so on. So those are those are um, uh, handy uh, abilities to have uh, for uh, creating these groups. Next thing I'd uh, I'll do here is I'll just show you a quick uh, connection to what we call the Express Lab. Now the Express Lab was existing in in um, the, uh, the the prior version of the application, but we've actually added a number of other tools that that it did not have in the past. Those would be things including things like local tone mapping, color balance, and we've got the, some contrast adjustments and such that were not exposed in the last version. I'm just going to grab the color balance here and uh, take a look at just making a change to maybe warm this photo up just a little bit, um, just, just so we can make a change that I can show this next feature. But anyway, for quick edits, quick changes, um, and things that, uh, uh, that are, are, are generally very light uh, editing oriented, uh, we've got those all exposed in this particular, um, particular tool for you. Uh, once I've made an edit uh, to, an, uh, to a photo, you'll see a little pencil down next to it here. Uh, again, based on customer feedback, based on your feedback uh, from the various various forums, uh, we found that a lot of people deal with uh, this, this exact sort of scenario I'm laying out here. You go out, you do a photo shoot, and uh, you come back and you end up with groups of pictures, maybe the entire photo shoot, that are all done under the same or similar lighting conditions or same or similar types of edits are going to be needed to those photos. Um, in this particular case, I was shooting at a little bit of a higher ISO. I might need to do a little bit of digital noise removal. Uh, certain of the ways that the lighting worked, I might want to do a, just a little color balance or I might want to do a little adjustment to, to one detail or another on, on a whole batch of photos. We've made that very simple, very straightforward by basically once you've made an edit, you'll see a little pencil on the, on the photo, I can then go in and I can capture that editing. Uh, at that point, I can go select uh, an entire group of photos, you know, select an entire group of photos like this, and then I could apply the editing to them. So in this particular case, the color balance change that I made to that one photo, all I have to do is click Apply Editing, uh, and it'll automatically be batched up and applied to uh, each of these other images. So it's really straightforward to be able to do that and very sim simple and clean uh, to be able to make those changes. So um, that's, uh, that's a very powerful uh, change that we've made to the application uh, to, to be able to do that. Um, next uh, thing I'll show you is uh, the, uh, the, the raw loader. Now, uh, raw comes in many different flavors, uh, raw camera, raw shooting on cameras is, is a, you know, the best uh, type of image that you can get because it's the raw data from the sensor and it's, uh, it's fantastic to be able to, to take that and load it in. Uh, what we've added this time is uh, a raw lab that will allow us to take a, um, a, 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 an adjustment uh, scenario, a set of uh, adjustments, make adjustments as we load the image in. Uh, uh, just to, for clarity, again, on formats, uh, there are many, many, many different formats, many different extensions that are used. Um, I know some of you will look at that and say, well, that looks like a TIFF file. It happens to be shot from a Canon 1DS, a little bit older camera, and instead of using a CRW or a CR2 extension, it happened to encapsulate its RAW uh, in a TIFF wrapper. So that's why it looks like a TIFF file, but it's really RAW. Um, anyway, so here we have our, uh, our giraffe. Uh, we've loaded it into the RAW lab. Uh, here we can uh, you could see the the customary adjustments that you can make and uh, let me just uh, cool it up a little bit here get a little bit more of the blue showing in the background throw a little more shadow on it uh, you get the idea uh, it's very easy to to make these particular changes um, I can go right into my full editor and make other changes at this particular point uh, or um, I also have the ability to click apply and uh, apply gives me the ability to very simply then take whatever changes I had made to this photo. Again, I've got the little pencil down here. It's blue to signify that this is a raw uh, image that I've associated some adjustments to. Uh, and I can capture that editing, and I can click on another photo, uh, and I can apply 
the editing to that. So it'll take all of those settings and all of those changes uh, in the raw dialog and uh, associate them with uh, another image. So very easy, very simple to do. Now, you saw in the, the, the raw lab as I was there that there was a film strip at the bottom. And yes, that is the idea. I can take a, a bunch of photos in at the same time. And then I can click through them and do those fine tuning adjustments once I've kind of got the, the gross settings done in this way. Or I can just take them in and manually fix every one of them. Uh, the other thing that uh, the raw shooter always ends up doing is along the lines at some point is you're going to want to be able to easily convert your raw photos uh, to a different format. In this particular case, um, we might select this batch and, and want to save them out as JPEGs uh, because we're going to be doing something with them online or taking them to a certain printer or making them available for someone who doesn't doesn't have uh, raw support like we do. Um, or, you know, you might be taking them out to 16-bit TIFFs or ping files or whatever. Uh, we support basically virtually any of the writable formats that uh, the Photo Pro application supports. So if you want to have them as BMPs, the, you can do that as well. Uh, so that's a quick view of the organizer that's uh, now uh, the, the new starting point for the application. Uh, if you uh, if you want, you can still start the application in uh, in the photo editor, but I think you'll find that very quickly this is a very powerful way of finding your photos, being able to quite quickly uh, navigate through uh, through the, the structure of photos that you, you would um, load in through the program or load in um, just uh, onto your hard drive. And uh, we've got a, a fair number of options there that really help you do the organization, the sort, select, you can delete files that are particularly uh, uh, embarrassing, and uh, uh, but really clearly um, get those sets of photos that you want to go further with and the adjustment workflow, the ability to be able to capture changes and apply them uh, are very, very, very powerful. So that's the all new front end of the application. And uh, the the, uh, the way the organizer is now linked uh, directly in, and you'll see uh, as I as I start to uh, show a few of the other items here that uh, that uh, organizer is uh, really part of the application. It's 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 a view of the app, uh, application. It's very tightly linked, so it's very easy to get uh, get in directly and uh, be able to. Uh, get you know, back and forth between our Express Lab and our full editor. So uh, I think that that um, that's working quite well. Um, let me show you a, a couple of other things that we've done in the application. First, uh, here I'll talk to uh, the performance considerations that we've had. Um, we've always had a very strong uh, core editor uh, in uh, Photo Pro and uh, the ability to do layers and all of the adjustments and all of the effects are very, very powerful. Um, w some of them uh, have been uh, uh, able to utilize additional hardware that you might have on your machine if you happen to have a Core 2 Duo or uh, additional processors or you know something that allows us to work in a multi-threaded environment. Uh, this is something that uh, is, is, is something we use now in many of the, uh, the types of adjustments that we're doing. So we will, if you have uh, multiprocessors, uh, you can cut, cut the, the, the amount of time that it takes to do uh, particularly CPU intensive tasks down dramatically. We've looked at the uh, workflows, the specifically the preview workflows, and made adjustments to them so as to make things a lot faster. Uh, so when, when you're when you're moving uh, sliders and such, um, those adjustment workflows are faster than they have been in prior versions. Uh, and then we've also looked at. Uh, specific tools and uh, the usability of those tools uh, certainly have surveyed uh, the user community on this as well to look at particular items that are uh, more difficult to work with or, or just you know good idea but wasn't quite fine-tuned in its user interface the way uh, it should have been. Uh, one of those tools, and, and I'll just point this out as a, as a simple example of the type of change that we've made uh, in the in this version of the application. Uh, one of those tools is the depth of field tool. Now this is a, 
uh, a new modern uh, type of engagement photo. Uh, you see this done a fair amount uh, with uh, engagement photography. Um, the, the, the young couple is in the background, a little bit out of focus, uh, and uh, 